Welcome to Best Buds Gardening. I'm Julie. Today, let's learn how to grow butternut squash, seed to harvest. Butternut squash has a long growing season, about 120 days. So to get a good head start, about four weeks before our last frost date, we're going to soak our seeds overnight. By morning, they should have sunk to the bottom of the container, then into a damp paper towel inside a baggie to germinate. We want to keep this baggie somewhere warm, about 80 to 85 degrees. After two or three days, our seeds should be germinating. I have a cup of pre-moistened seed starting mix with drainage holes on the bottom. We're going to place a germinated seed on top of the moistened seed starting mix and cover it up with a little more. Keep the seed starting mix moist but not soggy until our seedling hatches. Also, continue to keep it warm. I like to put mine inside a Tupperware container and sit it on top of the CPU for a little bit of bottom heat. Five days later, our little butternut squash seedling has hatched. We'll continue to let him grow inside under a grow light until he's ready to be hardened off and transplanted outside. You don't need to start him early indoors under a grow light, it just gives you a head start. The weather is now warm and Mr. Butternut Squash has been hardened off. I like to take a coffee can with the bottom cut out and fill it halfway up with compost. Then I'll take Mr. Butternut out of his little cup, set him into the coffee can, and fill in around him. Then a nice little drink to settle him in. A couple of weeks later, Mr. Butternut looks like this. He wants to enjoy six to eight hours of sunlight a day, and he'll be a moderate feeder, so shoot him some balanced fertilizer every couple of weeks. After the vines are long enough, I can very carefully start training them to attach to my trellis. Be careful not to break your vines. Our two butternut squash plants will spend about a month and a half growing very long vines. After your vines are about 10 feet long, we'll see the male blossoms start to appear. This is a male blossom. It sits on a thin stem. Nothing's underneath of him. About 10 days later, the female blossoms will make their appearance. This is a female blossom. It sits on a tiny little green baby butternut squash. At first, these female blossoms may turn yellow and start to rot off, then fall off without ever blooming. That's okay. The vines kind of have to practice a bit first, especially in the sweltering summer heat. Soon, the vines will kind of acclimate to the heat a little bit and you'll have your very first female blossom ready to open. Here's a lovely female blossom that should be opening tomorrow. And here she is. Squash blossoms attract all kinds of pollinators, including honeybees. But if you have to hand pollinate, here's how. You can collect some pollen from a male blossom onto a small paintbrush. Then you can wipe that pollen right onto the center of the female blossom. The day after successful pollination, the blossom will start to wither away and eventually it'll fall off. But the baby butternut squash will not. It will start to grow into all it can be. It'll get bigger every day. When your squash reaches its maximum size, it will stop getting bigger and put its energy into ripening. You'll start to see it turning browner and browner a little bit more every day. Our butternut squash will continue to grow and ripen through the summer. Our vines will continue to grow and grow and make more and more squash. When there's only a couple of months left before your first frost date, you really want the plant to put its energy into ripening the fruit it's already got, rather than continuing to make more that won't have enough time to ripen. So I'll cut off my growing tips. 
You also want to give the butternuts as much sunlight as possible by cutting off extra leaves that are shading them. They need sunlight to ripen, and they won't really ripen off the vine. When the whole butternut has turned a nice tan shade and those green stripy lines are gone, and the skin is nice and hard, it's ready to be cut from the vine. Leave as much stem as possible on the squash for good storage. Sometimes, if an early frost is coming, you'll want to cut them when the green lines are still there. That's okay, the squash is ripe, it just won't store as long. So use those first, and don't leave your squash on the vines through your first frost. If you've still got a few warm days, it's good to cure your butternuts so they'll store longer. It also concentrates the sugars so they'll taste better. Simply place them outside in the sun for about 10 days when it's around 80 degrees. Then bring them inside, wipe them down with a 10% bleach solution to remove any microorganisms. Let them dry and then store them in a cool place where they'll get good airflow. Your butternut squash should last through the winter with no refrigeration. One final note on butternut squash. They're resistant to squash bugs. Now that doesn't mean immune. Squash bugs don't like butternuts very much. If you're growing other types of squash like pumpkins or zucchini, the squash bugs would really prefer those. But eventually, the squash bugs will find your butternuts. Butternuts being resistant means they can take a little squash bug damage and keep on ticking. Happy butternut growing. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you won't miss out on how to grow your favorite vegetables.